السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This evening we read some very very touching verses where Allah سبحانه وتعالى makes mention of the condition of the wrongdoers and the sinners when death comes to them. They will tell the angels of death to give them another chance, or they will tell Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give them another chance because they will say, now we understand and now we have seen. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون. Nay, indeed, it is only a statement they, that they are uttering. They will not be granted another chance, and even if they were granted another chance, they would repeat the same deeds that they had done. And Allah says they will have to remain in this condition until the day they will be resurrected and the accounts shall be taken. We were in the midst of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. In fact, we had completed the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Mention was made of the death of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But what is important for us to know is the precise point of where he died only comes to us from the people of the book and from the Hebrew scriptures. So exactly where he died, we can say that he was buried here or there or in Al-Khalil or Hebron and so on. But we should remember that that information came to us from the Hebrew scriptures. And our policy with that is لا نصدق ولا نكذب. We neither say it is false, nor do we say it is true. It is something, it may be true, it may not be true. It is not in fact something that we are going to be questioned on the day of Qiyamah to say where was Ibrahim alayhi salam buried we are not going to be questioned about that we are going to be questioned about our own deeds what are the lessons that you learned from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam as we had said there was a prophet known as Lut Lut alayhi salam briefly his history is that he was a youngster at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam when Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire and when Ibrahim alayhi salam came out and so on, this young man, he accepted the message of Ibrahim and he was the only one at the time. Later on, there was a female known as Sarah who had also accepted the message of Ibrahim alayhi salam and those were the two. So Ibrahim alayhi salam went further up north later on and we had made mention of how he sent Lut alayhi salam to the people of Sodom or the people of Sodom and Gomorrah as we know them in the English language. And Lut alayhi salam was working in that region whilst Ibrahim alayhi salam had his own life and what happened in Mecca happened and so on. Now, Lut alayhi salam found his people to be very, very different, to be wrong, to be queer, to be filthy. The word used in the Quran is filthy. And we read that verse this evening in Surah Al-Anbiya where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ تَعْمَلُ الْخَبَائِثِ We saved him from the people who used to engage in filth. خَبَائِثِ That which is completely dirty and filthy. So Allah describes this action as filth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوطِنِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The people of Lut have belied all the messengers. Now there was just one messenger who came to them. So why does Allah say they belied all the messengers? Because we are Muslims. What do we say? We believe in Allah as one. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in that shahada that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger. But our iman is not complete unless we believe in all the messengers. The previous messengers. So if someone says, I believe in Noah, Abraham, but I don't believe in Moses, and then I believe in Jesus and so on, he cannot call himself a Muslim. He cannot. Because we believe, Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa yawmil akhir and so on. We believe in Allah. We believe in all the books. In a nutshell, we believe there were books revealed to these messengers or to some of the messengers. And whatever we know from them, we accept. And we know that this is correct if the Quran has confirmed it. The same applies to the messengers. Those names that appear in the Quran, we have to accept. And we have to believe that they were all the highest of people, the best that were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fact that they denied Lut alayhi salam, they denied everybody else. 
It means they denied everybody else. And this is the same message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to all the previous nations as well. So Allah says, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ لُوطٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ When Lut alayhi salam told them, Don't you fear Allah? I am a messenger who is trustworthy. I have come to you. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I am not asking you a single penny. Look again. He says, I am not asking one dollar from you, meaning nothing. No currency, no money, no gold, no silver, nothing material. I don't want anything. So they began to accuse him. This man is come to our town here and he's starting to convey a message and telling us to stop doing what we're doing because he wants to make gain something out of it. And Allah says, no, he told his people, I don't want anything from you. Nothing at all. My recompense is with my Rabb. And then he directly mentioned to them what they were doing and how wrong it was. وَتَذَرُونَ مَا خَلَقَ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ How can you engage yourselves with the same sex? How can you engage in acts of immorality with the same sex? And how can you prefer them over the females? Indeed, you are a people who have transgressed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pause there for a moment. Today we have people claiming to be Muslims. And I've heard one of them on YouTube recently who says, no, I've studied the Quran. I studied the, the Quran totally. And in the Quran, what is prohibited is to rape the men. But if it is done with consent, there's nothing wrong. This is what they say. How foolish they are. How foolish they are when Lut is saying, you prefer to do this with men and you are leaving the women. Does that imply that he is saying don't rape the men, rape the women? Is that what he is trying to say? So the Quran clearly says that it is wrong what you are doing. They did it both ways, through rape as well as through consent, both. But they only did it with the same kind, Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how filthy this is. You know, I've given you one response. But that is the whole basis upon which people claim to still be Muslim and they believe that the Quran does not reject this issue of homosexuality. Well, they don't understand Arabic. They haven't understood anything that the Quran has come with. And to be honest, they are blinded because the Quran says when someone begins to engage in this type of action, Allah says it and we will come to that verse. They become blind. Blind meaning they can't see the right from wrong. Nothing at all. So with all due respect to the animals, they are worse than those animals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Remember, we, we are saying here due respect to the animals because animals, it is an insult to them to even suggest this to them. Automatically, the dogs and the pigs do not engage in this. Automatically, by nature. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard us. And this, we are saying it with an open chest. What that means is, it's a challenge. Allahu Akbar. I know secularly, someone might say, well, we are free to engage in this type of behavior. Well, I will tell you, we who are seated here are all Muslimin. As Muslims, we are not free. Allahu Akbar. We have chosen to surrender. Once you choose to surrender, you're no longer free. You are governed by a certain code of conduct. For example, you are now a South African. For example, you are no longer free to do anything that would break the law of South Africa. But if you want to break the law, you can go and live in another country. The same applies. When you are not a Muslim, you can do what you want. But the minute you say you are a Muslim, you are governed by Islam. If you want to do something against Islam, one is to commit it knowing it's wrong, you still remain a Muslim. But you are a sinful person. May Allah safeguard us. But two is to do it and justify it and say Islam does not prohibit it. That would remove us from being a citizen of Islam if we can word it that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us safety and our children as well. So this is common logic. We understand this completely. That why is he comparing with the other sex when if they were engaging in rape in the same way it's wrong to rape this, it would be wrong to rape that. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding and may He open the doors of guidance for us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their sin was not only that they were engaging in this type of sodomy. It is known as sodomy because the village or the town was known as Sodom. Sodom. So that name, that word has been derived from them because they were the first in the history of mankind to engage in that according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Allah says, مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ How can you engage in this that nobody before you has ever, ever engaged in? So that means they were the first. Now those who say it's a biological problem, you know it is hereditary, you pick it up and so on, it's in your genes. Wallahi, that is a lame, cheap excuse. Cheap excuse. And I am baffled at how some people of medicine can even agree with that. Because there are certain people addicted to adultery. Why don't they say, well, you know what, it's hereditary. Some people addicted to alcohol. Why don't they say it's hereditary? Any sin, you can use the same cheap excuse to say it's hereditary. I got it from my forefathers. Allahu Akbar. How can we say that? If that was the case, anybody would be able to justify any sin they are engaged in. So nothing is hereditary. It is just people who cannot control themselves. And now, people who want to allow themselves to think dirty and they continue with those thoughts and then they want to fulfill those thoughts and continue in that particular filth. Believe me, a practicing Jew and a practicing Christian, a practicing Muslim, they all look at this in the same way. The moment someone has looked at it with an eye of acceptance, they lose Christianity, they lose their Judaism, they would lose their Islam. Something common. And those who have decided to accept it, they have changed their religion. Allahu Akbar. They have modified their religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us as Muslims protection. We, inshallah, we will never ever, we will never ever say that it is acceptable in Islam. Secularly, if you happen to be living in a country in the West or a country that doesn't want you to talk about it and so on, we will utter a balanced statement. And that is, in the same way that those people who want to look at it in that way are free to look at it that way secularly we are free to look at it as wrong secularly as well so i hope we understand it nobody needs to say no it's acceptable there are some countries they are forcing it to be studied in the syllabuses they are forcing it to be studied in the syllabuses and encourage it as something that there's nothing wrong about whereas we need to understand that is defying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nature that he has created us upon the very nature that man is being created upon is being defied. Not only man, but the creatures of Allah. Allah says, Every single thing we have created in pairs for you to take heed. When you have the ions, you have positive, you have negative. When you have electricity, you have positive, you have negative. Why don't they put in two positives? Allahu Akbar. Then see what happens. Two negatives, you get nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah says, don't only look at mankind and other, other kind, meaning uh, living creatures. Look at everything we've created in pairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. The people of Lut alayhi salam, they also engaged in what is known as qat'u tariq which means they were highwaymen. Highwaymen in the sense that they used to waylay the traveler and block him and steal his property. And they used to engage in that type of misbehavior as well. Another thing, Allah says, They used to have their clubs. The word nadi means a club. They had their clubs where they used to gather and engage in evil. All the time they would gather in the clubs, they would encourage people in evil, doing evil and they would do all that evil. So, so much evil. And Allah says, this was one of the main things they used to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salam said to them directly, how can you engage in homosexuality and not only that but in full view of everybody astaghfirullah so that was another crime what was the crime allah says wa antum tubsirun you are shamelessly engaging in it whilst people are watching 
People are looking at you. You have no shame. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, people will continue to have the hope of the forgiveness of Allah for as long as they don't commit open sin. The minute you commit a sin openly, when everybody is watching, your hope is less. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. Because there are people who do it openly. You know, sometimes you find a person, as you walk, and they are engaging in something evil. Say for example, someone is blasting his beat in his motor vehicle. And the whole road is shaking. And they notice, oh, there's a sheikh next to me. They used to turn it off before. They used to turn it off. Nowadays, they don't have the music. They see the sheikh and they blast it. What is he going to do about it? This is what's happening. Why? Because people are now asking for the punishment of Allah. They're asking. You know, before, if there was a boy and a girl holding hands and the sheikh was passing, they quickly left hands because they say, we don't want to be seen like this. You know, we're not related here. We just, you know, illicit, so to speak. Now, sheikh passes, they start hugging and kissing in front of him. What are you going to do? Even my father didn't tell me. Astaghfirullah. So the world is changing. People are asking for trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, فَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ وَتَقَطَعُونَ السَّبِيلَ وَتَأْتُونَ فِي نَادِيكُمُ الْمُنْكَرُ Firstly, the sin you are committing, you are engaging in homosexuality. Secondly, you are waylaying the traveler and stealing all his goods. And thirdly, in your clubs, you are engaging in nothing but evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salatu wa salam continued reminding them. And they laughed at him, they scoffed at him, they accused him of being possessed, they accused him of being all sorts of people who wanted this and who wanted that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him any male children. He only had two girls, two daughters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them. But before we get there, let us take a look at some of the words that are used in the Quran to describe these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِّن دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ How can you engage in intercourse with the same sex? Astaghfirullah. One wonders how to describe it. Once I had met two people on, a, on an aircraft when I left Cape Town going to Johannesburg and I have to share this with you. And one brother, I asked him, what's your name? He says, this is my name. He gave me a Muslim name. And the other brother, I asked him, what's your name? He says, this is my name. And I said, so is this your father? He says, no. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. I had to get up. And I had to tell him with all due respect, I've never come across this before. I have one question for you. What do you do? That's all I want to know. And wallahi, he just looked at me. Hey, do you know that I can get you arrested for harassment? I said, what are you talking about? I'm asking you a question. Now, the reason I'm saying this openly here today is because it is happening in our midst and people are not batting an eyelid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Yes, if anyone wants to leave the fold of Islam, they are answerable to Allah, not to me or to you or to anyone else. But we will continue preaching the Quran because we are free to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So Allah says, Bal antum qawmun musrifun. You are people who have indeed gone beyond limits. In another verse, Bal antum qawmun tajhalun. You are people who are thick. Astaghfirullah. Jahala, ignorant complete idiocy may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us these are words used in the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says how can you leave that which we have created for you and opt for something else from this verse again we learn it was not just rape because if it was Allah wouldn't say well go and rape the females no then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Lut alayhi salam looked at his people and he said قَالَ إِنِّي لِعَمَلِكُمْ مِنَ الْقَالِينَ O my people, I disassociate myself completely from whatever you are doing. I am not a part of you and I will never engage in this nor will I ever condone it and I want to make it clear that I oppose you very strongly and I am warning you of a severe punishment to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, 
وما كان جواب قومه إلا أن قالوا أخرجوهم من قريتكم إنهم أناس يتطهرون. His people only had one answer. They told the rest of them, they spoke amongst each other and they said, we need to kick Lut out of our community because he, he thinks he's very pure and clean. He thinks he is very pure and clean. We need to kick him out of the community. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. And Allah says in another verse, فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِي إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِّنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ Their response was that we need to now kick Lut and his family out of this community because they are people who claim to be very clean and they look at us as though we are very dirty. So then they warned him. لَإِنْ لَمْ تَنْتَهِ يَا لُوطُ لَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ Oh Lut, if you don't stop saying what you are saying, we will kick you out. If you don't stop saying what you are saying, we will kick you out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salam warned them of a punishment. He said, look, Allah is going to come to you with a punishment. I am telling you to do something that is better for you. And why is it that you want to engage in this? And you have been blinded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was another response they gave when he warned them of a punishment. Allah says, فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا اُتِنَا بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ The response of that community was none other than, O Lut, bring the punishment of Allah to us now if you are truthful. That was the same thing they told Nuh alayhi salam. Now they are asking for trouble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when they said that, Lut alayhi salam made a dua. He made a dua. قَالَ رَبِّنْ صُرْنِي عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْمُفْسِدِينَ He said, Oh my Rabb, help me against these people. Now remember one thing, Lut alayhi salam was one man, one. And he had two daughters. Those were the three that had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest of the community was sick. Allahu Akbar. According to the Quran, they were all out of their heads. Allah says they were blinded. They were encouraging people. They used to gather together and encourage. And whenever people used to be passing, they used to pounce on them. When the traveler is passing, they used to hide like vultures. And after a while, they would land on them, pounce, go and do what they want, and either release them or hold them captive and continue doing with them whatever they wanted. This is how evil the people were. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. And he says, then Lut alayhi salam raised his hands to us and he asked us for help. And he says, Rabbi najjini wa ahli mimma ya'maloon. Oh Allah, safeguard myself and my family from what they are doing. Now, if you take a look at what we believe is the changed Bible, you find that they blame Lut, they call him also one of them, and they say he engaged in an act with his own daughters. Astaghfirullah. In Islam, we believe that is blasphemous. That is the highest blaspheme is to insult a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to accuse him of something that really he is free from. When Allah sends us a messenger, he sends to us the highest of messengers, those who were of the highest character and conduct and the cleanest of the crop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So Lut alayhi salam was free from all that. They accused him, they said what they wanted. Later on, only Allah knows why they changed the scriptures in order to try and make him look like a criminal. Was it because they also wanted to engage in it? Only Allah knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Unlock spiritual enrichment with One Islam TV app. Immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music free, fully halal, and continuously updated with fresh content daily. Enjoy a user-friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos, create personalized playlists, and download and watch your content offline. Download the One Islam TV app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite. Mm -hmm.